God wants you in heaven and Satan wants you in hell. Where are you going? It's not where you want to go, but where are you going? In November, we are having a big concert here, Justin Bieber. Thousands of people want to go there, but not everyone can go there, only those who have the ticket. And so also with heaven. Many want to go there, not everyone can go there. You need a gate pass, you need something. At the end of the sermon, you'll be very clear, you'll be absolutely clear that what is this gate pass that you need and whether you have it. And if you don't have it, how you can get that gate pass that gives you entry into heaven. You know, there's one man, he was also very interested in getting that gate pass. And we'll call him Dr. Nick, you know, <laughs> instead of Nicodemus, because he was a very learned man. He was a teacher of the teachers. He came from the highest echelons of society, a who's who, a ruler. And not only that, he was a very polite man, a gentleman, because he came to Jesus, who didn't go through all this formal education, who was not recognized, and addressed Jesus in a polite way, saying, teacher. He was a seeker. That's why he came to Jesus. He was looking for something that he didn't have. Not only was he educated, not only was he a seeker, a gentleman from a high society, he was also very moral and very religious. Pharisees were very religious people. So what that tells us is that you can be a wonderful person, very gentleman, a ladylike. You can come from the highest levels of society. You can be a seeker. You can be moral. You can be upright. Got everything going for you, respected in society, and yet not know about the gate pass. And that's why I came to Jesus. I've run ahead. Let's go to the... He missed the fact that he needed the gate pass. And you know, Jesus is very good at going straight to your heart. He is here telling, oh, you know, we have observed you. You're doing all these good things. Uh, you must be from God because nobody else can do these things unless he's from God. And Jesus knew what he was seeking and went straight. He just didn't go to all the introductory things and said, unless you are born again, you cannot see the kingdom of God. Very abrupt, very clear, very concise. Unless you are born again, you cannot see the kingdom of God. Born again means born from above, birth from above. Jesus said everyone needs it. Unless you are born of the water and the spirit. Just the normal birth is not sufficient. You need birth by the Spirit. See, what is happening over here, you must watch is this. You know, Jesus is there, Nicodemus, Dr. Nick is there, and there are also the disciples of John the Baptist. John the Baptist is also ministering, and his ministry is through baptism by water. Now, Jesus is also ministering over here, and that's why Jesus says in the context, we tell of what we know. So who is the we? This is the people. So in the context, you see this is happening. Now, what is happening over here is this, the water... Uh, for the Jews meant, uh, didn't mean baptism. Water was for the Gentiles, the unclean people who are inferior, who don't have, you know, relationship with God, who wants to know God. It's for those people. A Jew will never get baptized. A Gentile needs baptism to come close to God. So what Jesus is saying is, in another way, water, baptism. <coughs> John the Baptist was saying, you got to be baptized, even to the Jews. You stand condemned because you are no good. You've done wrong. You've done evil things. You've cheated. You've bribed. You've told lies. You've suppressed people. You need to repent. You need repentance. So Jesus was saying, you need repentance. And not only that, you need the Spirit. Born again means born from above. It is a birth given from above. That's what born again means. He compared this to the work of the wind, you know, the wind. You can't see the wind. You don't know whether the wind is coming from there or it's going to come from there or coming from the back. You don't know. You don't know its origin, where it started. You, know, you don't know where the wind is going, but you see its effect. You see the leaves moving, you know, the houses, the roof being torn off. You, know, you see its effects. And so it is with the Spirit of God. We can't dictate to the Spirit of God, you come from here, you do this, and you go. No, 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 we, we can't. The Spirit of God is sovereign. Nobody dictates to Him. Nobody tells Him where to do, what to do. But we see where He is working. And uh, Nicodemus doesn't get it. How can it be? You know, I don't understand. I'm old. 
I don't get it. And so Jesus has to tell another story of something that happened way back there in the Old Testament. We read the story. So what happens? Here's this people of God. They have to take a detour. God gives us detour, isn't it? You want something. <laughs> and, and God doesn't take you there. God uh, takes you roundabout way. You, know? <laughs> you want a job? He doesn't give you. You want quick healing? He doesn't give you. You, know, you want a relationship restored? It doesn't happen. You want something? Uh, you, know, you want a boyfriend or a girlfriend? Or, or you, know, you want a uh, you know, raise in your side? He doesn't give that. He, he takes a detour. And God took them on a detour, and they were impatient, it says. The Bible says they're impatient. And they were in opposition. They began to grumble. They were very unthankful people. He said, why, why did you bring us from back there? You know, back there, they were in bondage. They hardly survived. There were pe people, you know, with their whips and their guards and their managers pressing them all the time. No rest. God freed them, and they are so ungrateful. They said, you know, why did you free us from back there? They were bitter. And not only this, they said, we loathe this food. They said, no food, no water. There was food. He said, we don't like this food. We don't like it. And so what does God do? He sends those poisonous serpents. The serpents bite, and they start dying. So as they start dying, <laughs> they come to Moses running. They said, oh, okay, you know. Please, 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 we, we, we did something wrong. Please, please, talk to God for us. God sends the snake, they die, they repent. And so God then provides a cure, the cure, the solution. So simple. Moses makes the bronze serpent, puts it up on a pole, and you are bitten, you're dying. So what have you got to do? You don't run to a doctor, you don't put anything over here. You just have to look. You just have to look, and if you look, you're healed. That's God's solution. What happens to those who said, oh, this is silly, you know, how can you, I'm, I'm poisoned, you know, and the poison is seeping up. I'm going to die. How can I just look at that snake, you know, up there and live? And I'm going to find some solution. I'm going to find a doctor. I'm going to find some herbs and I'm going to find somebody who will heal me. If you do that, what happens? You're going to die. Because God's solution is just look at, the serpent was God's idea. The cure was God's idea. And above all, it was a picture of the cross. The cross. You want to live? Look at the cross. You want to die? Turn away from the cross. And that's what Jesus said. Nicodemus, just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up. How you get your gate pass? You look at the cross and you believe. That whoever believes in him may have eternal life. So simple. You just look. You just believe. It's such a wonderful picture. Moses here putting up the snake. You know, just as Moses did that, put it up there, maybe on a hill so everyone could see. So must the Son of Man be lifted up. How do you get the gate pass? Believing that only Jesus can save us. It means when we do that, we are given birth. From above, God gives us birth. God gives us his spirit. This is what scripture says. And there is salvation in no other, in no one else. For there is no other name under heaven given among men by which we must be saved. There is no other name. I wish there was, because I'd tell you. I wish there were other solutions. They could look at, you know, the hill or the mountain or the trees. No, just look at the snake. Just look at the cross. Why do we need the gate pass? Why do we need to be born from above, because we stand condemned. We stand condemned, all of us. One of us, some of us may be better than others. Kevin may be better than me, but there's always somebody better than him. You know, maybe Gift is better than uh, Kevin, and maybe uh, Darwin says, no, I'm better than him, you know. So there may be somebody better than somebody else. But when we compare with God's holiness, his standard, no matter how good you are, the Bible says we all fall short. We don't measure up. We don't meet the standard that God wants. And therefore, judgment awaits us, whether it's death and hell or forgiveness and heaven. What do you need to do? Very simple. Believe in the Lord Jesus as the cure sent by God. 
I said in the beginning, at the end of the sermon, you will know for sure whether you have the gate pass. Whoever believes in the Son has, not will have in the future, or may have, but has now. Whoever does not obey the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God remains on him. So you can be sure now. If you have put your trust and belief in Jesus as the solution God has made to cure us of our death. See, we are already heading towards condemnation because what Jesus did, the scripture says, in other words, he paid the ransom for us. You know, ransom is you're already taken by somebody. <laughs> you know, you are taken by a militant group. You've taken. And to release you, somebody has to pay the price. We are already taken. We are headed that way. You know, the enemy, Satan, has taken us. But Jesus has paid by his blood the ransom price to free us. And if you, sometime in the past, have come to the foot of the cross, you have repented. The water, you know, a Jew does not take baptism. Well, you got to. You got to repent of your sin. Nicodemus, that's necessary. If you have repented of your sin and you have believed that Jesus sent by God as a cure to save you from condemnation, from hell, and that you put your belief in him, then you have the gate pass. And if you look deep in your heart, you will have the assurance by the Spirit. The Spirit of God will tell you deep down that you are his child. If you haven't, then you don't have the pass. And you just need it once. I want us to close our eyes, bow our head down, and I will give an opportunity now. I know that the Spirit of God has spoken to you through the Word of God. You know exactly what it takes to get to heaven. You need heaven's gate pass. You need to be born from above. You need to put your uh, trust on Jesus and Jesus only as one who was sinless, came and died for our sin. He is God's answer and solution. If you haven't done that and if you believe that Jesus died for you and you're re ready to confess before God that you are a sinner bound by sin and headed to destruction, but you want to get to heaven. God has spoken to you this morning. I want you to stand up wherever you are in your seat. Is there anyone here that doesn't have heaven's gate pass? You have not put your trust in Jesus. Would you please stand up wherever you are?